Welcome back to the channel, you curd nerds. We need to have a conversation about inoperative equipment in your aircraft. Ever since I posted that little video of that student struggling a little bit through that question of, is your airplane airworthy with an inoperative standby attitude indicator, the comments got flooded with either incorrect or incomplete answers from pilots, CFIs, and airline pilots alike, which is concerning. So we obviously need to go over advisory circular 9167, which is the advisory circular that the Federal Aviation put out that covers or at least guides pilots through inoperative equipment. Now, this advisory circular came out in 1991, but we should know this by now. But in case you missed it, in case you had some lapses in your training, let's cover it now. So during the pre-flight uh, process or pre-flight inspection, the pilot notices inoperative pieces of equipment. Let's use a standby attitude indicator, for example, just like I gave that student. So is the equipment required by the aircraft's equipment list or kinds of equipment list per 91.213 Delta? We're not going to 91.205. We're not going to A Tomato Flames flaps or anything like that. We are just going straight to 91.213 Delta. This is things like your POH. This is your KOEL, your COEL. These are documents with the airplane that say, hey, you need this piece of equipment if you are going to operate in these conditions. Okay, so I looked at my POH. My POH does not say anything about a standby attitude indicator being required. So we're going to move on. If no, is the equipment required by the VFR type certificate requirements as prescribed in the airworthiness certification regulations? Again, 91213 Delta. This is things like the type certificate data sheet, your TCDS. This is things like your engine. Your TCDS says it came with an IO360. So you need an IO360. We can't LS swap our Cessna 172. As much as we would like to LS swap our Cessna 172, we can't because it's required by a TCDS. Okay. Is the equipment required by an airworthiness directive? Now, an airworthiness directive, for those of you who don't know, is a required inspection, maintenance, or equipment that needs to be installed on an airplane for it to continue being airworthy. All right. For example, Cessna 172s in the 70s, 80s, and I think even into the early 90s require a seatbelt tensioner. You know that little thing that locks if you pull it too hard? They require a seatbelt tensioner to be bolted to the floor of the airplane and then attached to the seat because the seat rails get worn out. And when you go to rotate, your seat slides back but that auto tensioner is supposed to catch it. So if during your pre-flight, you go and tug on that auto tensioner and it doesn't tension, it doesn't tighten, congratulations that that is an inoperative piece of equipment. It is required by an airworthiness directive. The airplane's not airworthy. Let's say that that thing functions just fine. So we're going to continue on. Is the equipment required by FAR 91205, 91207, et cetera? We have now finally got to a tomato flames flaps grab card. The amount of people that went directly to saying, is it part of 91205? Check your A tomato flames flaps grab card. If it's not one of those, then you're good to go. That's not a fully correct answer. We checked, what is it? One, two, three other documents before we ever even got to 91205. Let's say it's not part of A tomato flames and flaps. It's a standby attitude indicator. So we're good. If no, the inoperative equipment must be removed from the aircraft per FAR 91213 Delta 3 or deactivated per 912133 2 and placarded as inoperative. At this point, the pilot in command is going to make the final decision on whether or not the aircraft is airworthy or safe to fly. So the full answer, if an aircraft is airworthy, is we are going to go right to 91213. 91213 asks us, do we have an MEL? No, we don't have an MEL. Most general aviation aircraft don't have MELs. Next thing it's going to ask, is it part of our KOEL or our COEL? No? Continue on. Is it part of a type certificate data sheet, whether it be the original one or a supplemental one, things for like vortex generators, winglets, a G5 installation, a new GPS installation, all of those are STCs and might have equipment that's required to be operable in the aircraft. If not, continue on. Is it required by an airworthiness directive? 
airworthiness directives. They are mandatory pieces of maintenance equipment or items that need to be installed or completed on an aircraft to ensure that it is still airworthy. If it's not part of an airworthiness directive, we're moving on. Now, is it part of 91205? Is it part of a tomato flames and flaps? No, moving on. The last thing that you're going to do is, is it safe? Have you placarded it? Have you disabled it? Yeah. All right. Go have fun. Go fly your airplane.